Friday night here in Munich. It is Scotland against Germany, or Germany against Scotland, whichever way you want to do it. Um, Chris Ruelamo, part of that blind drunk optimism of the Scotland fans who are uh, invading Munich in a beautiful way. But I've spoken to a few Germans since I've been here on Monday. I said to one last night, uh, can Germany win it? And he literally laughed in my face. So is that how Germany's feeling, that they can't win the tournament on home soil? I don't think too many people think that Germany will win it. But we are competitive. I think we're, the expectation is that we're going to have a decent Euro rather than a sensational one. And I think that's a healthy attitude. It's not quite the pessimism and the desolation of we're going to be terrible. That's how it felt a few months ago. It's not that we're definitely winning it, give us the trophy now, what is the point of playing all these games? <laughs> it's somewhere in the middle. And I think that reflects both how the team has been progressing in recent weeks and months, but also, of course, Germany's recent history, which has been very, very poor, and people finding it hard to say, oh, you know, two years ago we were close, four years ago we were close, six, year go, go, six years ago we were close. No, we haven't been close since 2016. That's eight years. You might not... You might not know. Oh, sorry, I can't speak English anymore. You might not know. This is only two beers after for me. You might not know <laughs> what it what it feels like to get close in tournaments and European competition on a regular basis. All right. But uh, for us, not having been there now for eight years is eight years of not just hurt but a complete disaster. Really. Raf, does that not is the, the human element? Does that not make it easier for this group of players to go out there and play with a certain freedom? Then, if there's not an expectation from the nation, though, surely that you never have freedom playing for Germany because you're still expected to to win. You are Germany, and this is the opening game of the Euros on German soil. So of course, the pressure is there, but I think it's a slightly healthier pressure than, let's say, the team faced going into 20, the 2014 World Cup when everyone thought, unless Germany win. The, the World Cup, it is a disaster there. The pressure on Löw and that team was nothing like the pressure now. Now it's, let's be good, let's perform well, let's get to the semi-final, maybe the quarter-final, depending on who we're playing against, and then build from that and then be in a better position for the World Cup. I would say it's a healthy attitude, but of course some people, it will be mirrored in sort of fatalism or self-deprecation, saying we have no chance of winning. Others will tell you, why not? And I think in the wider scale, in the, in the bigger sc scope of things, it is a probably a sort of balanced and pretty healthy attitude that we're going into this. So look, this is a, a simplistic question in some way, Raf, but you know, when you look back to last summer, I mean, Germany were on the verge of being a bit of a laughingstock, losing against Colombia and Japan and then Poland. So what, what's Nagelsmann done? In, in simple terms, to change things around so that you're beating France and you're beating the Netherlands, you're beating Greece? He's made a few interesting decisions. He's taken out a few of the big names, which we would have expected to be there. But he has decided that he needs, in his words, more workers, fewer artists, more team players, less egos. And this is not a Germany team necessarily heavy on divas and sort of, you know, Stefan Effenberg type figures who are going to create lots of problems but he wanted more togetherness he wanted more humility if you will and it's reflected in the players he's left out Leon Goretzka has been left out Mats Hummels has been left out both you could say on recent performances deserve to be in Leroy Sané I think nearly missed out Nico Schletterberg nearly missed out and talking about this Nagelsmann was quite revealing he said I didn't just speak to players, I also spoke to the staff, I spoke to the chef, I spoke to the massage therapist, and I wanted to know who are the players who bring people together, and by implication, who are the players who don't. Mm. And that worked. It worked because those two games in March, Germany played in a much more cohesive way. They were quite hungry, they were willing to fight, they were willing to run. I mean, the kind of basics that every team needs, but maybe sometimes it's missing for whatever reason and it was there and they tried really hard I think they also played against two teams and we should really put this into perspective who didn't quite have the same motivation I mean for Germany and Nagelsmann a lot was in s at stake on March because those two games dependent really determined how we were going into this tournament and there was talk even of Nagelsmann maybe losing his job because he was so poor yeah. in the previous games in November when they lost against um, Turkey and a lost against yeah. Austria so he needed to 
show that this team is coming together and the team needed to show that and they did it really well. And the fact that the last two friendlies weren't quite as impressive, I think hasn't done, done that much damage because people are still thinking about those games against the really big sides. France and Netherlands and think this Germany team will be okay. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.